Hey guys and welcome back to Anton and Volk's Spot of PC. Today we're going to be taking a look at Lethal League, which is an indie fighting game developed by Dutch developer Team Reptile. In Lethal League, up to four players face off against each other in an arena. The goal is to hit a ball back and forth and have the ball hit other players until there's one player left. With each consecutive hit, the ball will speed up more, making it harder for the other players to not get hit and hit the ball back. In their review, Destructoid described the game as if Mario Tennis and Smash Bros had a baby and it was raised by Europe European DJs who love baseball. Thanks, Wikipedia. That is a very apt description. I love it. Pretty much nothing else really needs to be said at that point. You pretty much got everything said there, right there in that little description. <laughs> So this certainly looks zany. Is it, did you just pick it for like sheer surface value variety alone, mate, or is there any depth to Lethal League? Um, there's not really a huge amount of depth. There's a couple of reasons why I want to put it out there. The first one being it's just it's a visceral amount of fun. It's very easy to get into, and it's just such a joy to play. And the music helps amp it up just that little bit more. Mm -hmm. But there was another reason why I didn't want to put it out there, is because uh, Team Reptile themselves actually announced a um, new game in the Lethal League series called Lethal League Blaze. So this was kind of meant to be as a kind of return to the series, like the original game, just to see what it was about. And also just to raise some more awareness about a game, which I do think whilst it had like a couple of problems with netcode and things like that, it is such an incredibly fun game and I kind of wish more people played it. Mm. Oh, what happened to your teammate? Is he gone already? Yeah, he got uh, hit right near the beginning, so... I'm gonna show off a few... I'm pretty much gonna show off every mode that's available here, so... There's a few 1v1s, there's this uh, 2v2 team one here as well, and... There's a couple of others I'll be showing off as well, but we'll get to those later. I gotta say, the art style, I don't think does much for me, but the visual effects are pretty great. Oh yeah, visually it's a treat, especially when you get up to the really, really high ball speeds when you enter the negative zone. Whoa, that, <laughs> and that, things just get really, really quick. That's hype. Do we get to see that? I think so. I'm pretty sure I left one in there, but uh, we'll see. It's not just me, right? The font that pops up when it says, like, burst, etc. Seems like it was ripped straight from Smash Bros. Mellow. Yeah, I think it was a little bit. Obviously, this game does take some inspiration from Smash Bros. in terms of its uh, party fighter style, and uh, they took a few liberties with some of like, the visual stuff as well, like with the text is very melee-esque. But for the most part, it's kind of like its own thing by sort of being a glorified version of dodgeball. So you're not actually attacking your opponents directly. You're constantly trying to V for control of the ball and propel it at various different speeds and using your character's unique abilities to uh, push you forward a little bit further and make tricky shots to uh, throw them off. It seems like a very easy game to get into and one you uh, would have a lot of trouble putting down if it's as uh, visceral and addicting as it seems here. Obviously, I don't play the majority of the games on Spot PC. I'm a console gamer. Spot PC is mostly uh, me appeasing Volk, lest his bloodlust rides out of control on a leopard also made of blood and devours me whole. I wouldn't go that far, but that sounds pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll say yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm very poetic today for some reason. We're recording uh, in a burst of free. We had Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, we got this. And uh, the next game you'll see on Friday. And apparently you unlocked a new flavor for Raptor, whatever the fuck that means. Yeah, when you uh, play through the game, you get levels, and that unlocks uh, alternate colors for the characters. And the one thing that perhaps Lethal League uh, Blaze will benefit from is actually having more characters, because the game only has six, and oh. uh, whilst it's an indie developer and all that, I do think they maybe could have added at least a couple more in there, I think. Um, it originally had five, and then they added one in there, but I feel like maybe eight or nine would have been pretty solid for uh, this game in particular. I am amazed at the restraint that these uh, developers had of not going to uh, Yacht Club Games and asking to have Shovel Knight as a character, because I think he would be perfect. Yeah, he would. I'm pretty sure with Blaze they may actually go for it now, because obviously I think this came out before Shovel Knight was a thing, really. And especially well before Shovel Knight started appearing in just about everything that other developers end up uh, putting on the table. Yeah, yeah, because... Uh, <laughs> This came out um, in 2014. It was released on PS4, uh, 9th of May 2017, so this year. When did Shovel Knight come out? I gotta see this shit. 
Uh, Shovel Knight came out 2014, same year. Huh. Maybe it's just because Shovel Knight wasn't really established yet as being as great and popular as it was, so maybe it just wasn't a thing yet. So, the way that the game actually works is, um, obviously you can move around the uh, arena, you can jump, and when you hit the ball you can use the uh, analog stick to control exactly which direction the ball goes. So you can kind of control sort of like how and where it bounces in a rough estimate kind of way. And apart from that, you also have access to a bunt, which uh, resets the ball to default. And by default I mean that no color owns the ball, because when you hit it, the ball turns your color and that uh, shows that you basically control the ball and you can hit it again without worrying about getting killed by it. And everybody else has to kind of deflect it back and turn it to their color in order to take you down. So the bunt kind of resets that and you can double the speed of the ball by giving it a hearty thwack after the fact. So you can do some really tricky things later on when you get more used to the game by kind of bunting it and then immediately smacking it down again. Reaching ludicrous speed. For those of you who aren't aware of what bunt is, uh, of a batter, it is to gently tap a pitched ball without swinging in an attempt to make it more difficult to field. Although I guess that increases the uh, the possibility of it being caught and you being got out. Um, the main problem with the bunt is that you have to be incredibly accurate with it. It's not like a swing where you have a wide radius in which to hit it with. You have to be pretty much precisely on the dot in order to actually hit it, hit the ball with a bunt. So, there is a bit of risk associated with it. Also, since the ball turns neutral, there is every opportunity for someone to kind of intercept your bunt and then just hit it at you whilst you're in the process of uh, trying to put the ball back into your court uh -huh. and you just end up dying. So, there is some risk involved, but the reward means that you can get some uh, high powered and speed hits pretty much instantly, whereas normally you'd have to charge the ball up. I'm getting some really big salty bet vibes from this game. I don't know whether it's just the character design, which I think I actually don't really care for. When I said um, like visual design, that's what I meant. Like the game's aesthetics are fine. You know, visual effects and stuff are great. Sound cues, music, pretty good. I mean, we're fucking flying in a padded room here, but yeah, the character designs don't do much for me. I would agree with the exception, obviously, being the character I'm playing as, who is a uh, Candyman. I absolutely love Candyman. <laughs> He's like one of my favorite characters that kind of came out in uh... <laughs> Yeah, pretty much just for that reason alone, Candyman has some great kind of like animation to him that you can do all sorts of weird nonsense with. He's pretty great. And um, I think he's pretty much now the poster child of Lethal League because in the Blaze trailer, he was actually uh, one of the main characters that was uh, shown. That was in front of uh, Raptor, who's kind of your Ryu of the game, I suppose. So uh, I guess Candyman pretty much won out in that regard. I think all the design effort went into him, and I guess maybe Latch as well. I kind of like how Latch looks. Yeah, he's not bad. He's not bad. But like all the others are just kind of fairly average dude um, with uh, various batting things. Like uh, Dice here is uh, using a ping pong bat. Uh, you get Sonata who uses like a hammer with a boombox attachment on it. And then Candyman obviously uses his cane like a proper gentleman. Mm -hmm. And uh, Latch uses his tail, so they all have like different things that they use. But obviously, I feel like they could have been improved it if they do decide to add more characters in Blaze. So you could go like tennis rackets, for instance. Or, oh yeah, oh yeah. Or they have someone who's like a lacrosse or a higher life thing going on. There's, there's lots you can still do, it's just kind of up to the developer to kind of tap into it. And I think with Lethal League being reasonably successful, I think now they kind of have the uh, development room and funds needed to uh, make that happen. I'm very much looking forward to how it turns out because, as you said, the presentation's a little on the rough side and can certainly use improvement, but the gameplay is so, so solid. Like, you could have a lot of fun with a game like this. Just, if you get four players in here, you could just play for hours. It's great. Speaking of, how did you get into Lethal League? It doesn't really seem like a game you just randomly come across. Uh, to be fair, there were a couple of uh, prolific YouTubers that kind of covered this game, and I just thought, oh my god, this looks so fun, I have to get this. <laughs> so I sort of like bought it with the intention of it being kind of one of those party games that I get a few people over and we just play it and get hype when the ball goes at like 2,000 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, have you experienced any such matches thus far? Um, I think... 
the most the, the memorable most memorable match I had was where we almost got the ball to its maximum speed, which is one million. We got it to something like six hundred thousand, and just the screen went nuts. <laughs> like you would not believe it. It was just going black, white, and flashing all over the place. It was incredible, and we were just so juiced up on adrenaline and hype at that moment. Like it took us a while to come down from it. Well, I think you maybe <laughs> we were just like. Oh, I think he might be overselling the situation a wee bit there, mate, but uh, it does certainly seem hype. Oh yeah, it does get really hype at points. And uh, this is the last mode we'll be showing off, so as well as um, kind of like your standard free-for-all points-based thing, um, you've also got a team-based game where you have to uh, hit the ball into a goal, so uh, a little bit more like a ball game might otherwise behave. You can't actually eliminate other players, but the only thing you've got to do is make sure your ball hits the target whilst the ball has been tagged in your colour. Deceptively simple, but very fun. I guess you could say it's, uh, hit the targets. Except there's only one target. <laughs> I was going, damn man, I was going for a Smash Bros. Melee thing and they got the text and all. Although I think one way they could improve this in uh, Blaze if they go down that route is maybe have, like, a level with multiple targets. So, like, there's maybe a target on the roof as well or something that you could hit. Or maybe the target moves around, like, every round. That would be quite interesting. I think they could make a decent uh, Rocket League clone out of this concept if they did it in 3D. Oh yeah, I absolutely agree, and I think maybe with uh, Lethal League... Um, Lethal League, um, Rocket League, similar name, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine, that's fine. But yeah, I think with Rocket League being as successful as it is, it's kind of sort of changed the uh, pseudo-sports game genre enough that maybe Lethal League can take some ideas from it and use it to make some improvements here and there to uh, make the game even more solid. I'm hoping so, anyway. We're very slowly becoming one with the ball. Uh, I love Candyman Special as well. The <laughs> ball can teleport through walls and uh, floors and ceilings. So it basically just keeps going in whatever straight line you propelled it across. And it ends after a certain point, so you can still get caught out by just having the ball suddenly bounce and just completely catch someone off guard and just kill them. Oh. Nasty. Oh, he didn't like that very much. <laughs> so yeah, final thoughts. I'm digging the music. Oh yeah, the music is very, very good. Um, I think Big Nick and the um, music that was in the uh, padded cell level are probably my favourites from there. I'll kind of be very happy if Blaze was basically just those two doing the entire soundtrack because Ordinary Days is still something that I just listen to on an MP3 player just in general. It's just so good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, final thoughts on Lethal League. It's a game that does have its fair share of problems. Like, uh, character variety is one thing, and the netcode in the online multiplayer wasn't the best. So, um, one thing I would like to see from Blaze is more character variety, and just improve the netcode. I think if they do those two things, their next game coming up will be even better. I mean, this this is a gem of a game as it is. It's just, uh, maybe a little bit on the underappreciated side, but then again, games like this do tend to live and die off their netcode, so... I guess maybe that was what did it in the end. So I'm hoping the next venture proves to be more successful so that this game right here can get in the limelight just a little bit more and I have more people to play with. Gameplay looks fun. It's just the character designs that kind of let it down for me. And like you said, lack of character variety. But we're out of time now, so we'll see you next time for the last Spot of PC episode of the month. See you then.